Crystal, Crystalis. Um, okay, let's start off with E4 here. Uh, Scandinavian defense. Oh, he plays it the way I do, with the uh, rounding up the pawn with the knight. So I'm just going for the normal, the normal moves. I don't do the bishop, that bishop check line. So let's kick that knight. I went back to f6. Normally they go back to b6, although I often <laughs> bring my knight back to f6 too. It just seems like kind of, kind of the more logical, the more logical place to put it. Now that's interesting. He didn't play knight to uh, c6. He put his pawn there. Let's ask this bishop what it's doing. Okay, let's trade off that bishop then. Had to be a little careful there. I, I was going to take with the queen, but um, I would have left my uh, queen pawn hanging. So, uh, how about if I just support my knight? This is a bit uh, ambitious here. I'm kind of opening up my king side a bit, but he doesn't seem to be in a position to really exploit it at the moment. He has one check. The queen, a uh, couple of checks. He can bring the queen or the bishop over here and check on this diagonal. He can block with the bishop though. And this pawn is defended. And I'm gonna get castled on the next move, I think. Well, unless he trades, then I'll take. Then I'll have a tempo to get castled. So he did go for the check. Yes, yeah, so I can block with the bishop, I think. I think that's okay. And here I have to trade. I take, he takes. Ah, this pawn is loose, huh? Well, let's kick. Well, that might lead to a position where not much is going on. So where can he go? He can come into these dark squares. Um, but I like the idea of centralizing my king here. That square is covered. The square is covered. I think he has to... Well, he can play um, f5 if he wants to. It's a long name with a bunch of <laughs> consonants. Krajiksta Silas. Or maybe Silas Krajiksta. Um, okay, let's um, bring a rick out. I guess in a situation like this, I don't want to allow the pawn damage that might hurt me in the end game. So instead of playing knight c3 right away, I will bring my rook to c1 and then play knight c3. So we're going to get some kind of pure uh, rook and pawn end game, it looks like. I have the more active king, <laughs> as long as uh, as long as it doesn't get in trouble in the center. So. 
He was giving me a pawn. That's funny. Is there some tactic I'm not seeing here? I mean, he went for this position. He just traded down to this end game. <clears throat> and uh, looks like it's just a little better for me. How about if I put my rook all the way up here? Bring my other rick behind it. And then if he takes, I get a um, get a passed pawn there. If he doesn't take, uh, he's got to defend the uh, <clears throat> the e pawn. Here we go. The double ricks. So there's check and grab the A-pawn here too. Or just go into a Rick and Pawn end game, a pawn up. So this should be winning. Let's uh, be careful. Let's uh, freeze his pawns. I'm going to have the uh, passed pawn in the in the center instead of on the wing, so it may be a bit tricky. So I, I think I need to um, stop his pawns at their most advanced uh, spot, and then um, kind of run him out of moves and try and move forward with my king. Also, this gives me a tempo move here, so I can later play. Uh, H, H3 to H4 when I need a tempo. So do I want the breakthrough now? I push, he takes, I take, he takes, I take. I think I want to advance these guys first. Get them as far forward as possible as well. Okay, so now's the, the time, right? Push. So a little king and pawn, or just, uh, yeah, king and pawn endgame technique here, I guess. Demonstration of, or lack of, technique, <laughs> depending on how this works out. Oh, you know, I could have thrown in the check. Maybe that would have been stronger. Push the pawn forward with check, and then take back. But I have to make sure there's room for my king to get in, you know. So I want to trade off some pawns, so I have uh, the ability to maneuver my king in and break through, but I don't want to trade off too many pawns. So yeah, it looks like he's going for that kind of thing, where he really wants me to take. Um, so if I take, he takes. I take, he takes. And it's my move, and I just play here. Then his king has to move, and it has to go back, and then I can put my king here. Uh, maybe I have to do it in this order. I take here first. I just realized if he takes that pawn, then he's got a runner, so I have to do it this way. If he doesn't take, my king is coming to the square anyway. So it's this tempo move I created earlier that uh, that uh, makes it easy to win this position. And I'm attacking this pawn, and he can't even defend it. And he can't attack this pawn. So pretty, pretty straightforward. Let's step back. He can run over here. So if we look at this in the analysis board, just for a second, how it might play out. He could, he could try and make a run for it like this. But he's too slow. 
I get the queen and this this um, this pawn has just started its journey so that's just too slow and um, and what else can he do he can attack the pawn I come back here if he doesn't go forward then he has to go back and then I just uh, come forward with my king and and one of those two pawns will queen so uh, anyway interesting game and uh, we will uh, check this out in the postmortem see you guys later bye